This lesson is about nothing more than picking the right tunes, getting them in the right order, and then getting to the point where you're ready to record your mix. Choosing, programming, practicing. Why? Why do it at all? Well, very few successful mixtapes have not been planned down to the last transition. Planning is not cheating. Unlike live DJ sets where mistakes are often just part of the excitement, this needs to be the very best you can do. It's like the difference between the spoken word and the written word. So it's worth putting the extra effort in to get this perfect. Now, by mistakes, I don't mean the little technical errors. I mean choosing the wrong tune and just wanting to go back and do it differently next time. You know, the preparation we're about to talk about here prevents all that happening. By the time you're ready to record your mix here, you're already very proud of it. So to start off with, we're gonna look at five tips for choosing the music for your mixtape. Before we do, you need to choose the length of your mixtape. I'm sure you've already got an idea, but if you haven't, think about it. Is it half an hour? Is it 60 minutes or 74 or 80, the kind of old CD length mixes? Or 90, which is the old C90 cassette, two, two 45 minute sides, or, or two hours? Now there's no right and wrong here, but whichever mix you admired and you wrote down on that worksheet earlier probably gives you an idea about this, but choose the length of your mix right now. So point number one in choosing tunes for your mix, make sure you're only choosing from the best technical quality tunes possible. We're gonna teach you to fix many things in this course, but we can't teach you to fix poor quality audio files. 320 MP3s, 256 AACs, WAV files or equivalent, and listen to them and decide whether just because they're that 256, 320 WAV, just because they're that, they actually are great sounding because sometimes files might be technically correct, but they sound terrible. So you want the best quality audio possible. You can't fix that down the line. My second point is don't start with a blank sheet. Start with a combo or two of tracks that you already know go well together. You've already got an idea of how you want to start this mixtape. So start with that nucleus of tracks, that seed. A mixtape is often little more than an exercise in linking together little clusters of tunes that you already know work well together. Point three, decide if you want to include all the big tunes of the moment, or you want to make something with a bit more longevity. So maybe more adventurous music selection and more coherent music selection, pulling together music from different years, for example. So for instance, if you were doing a mix series where it was different tunes every month, then you're going to be using new tunes. But if you wanted to do your definitive techno mix and it was your type of techno, your style, then you're going to want to pick tunes from a wider time frame, right? There's no right or wrong, but be mindful of where you are on that kind of spectrum. So my fourth point, pick about twice the number of tunes for your mixtape than you're going to need. That way, when it comes to programming, you'll have enough tracks to choose from. The rest can be used on future mixtapes. They're not going to get wasted, but that is a nice round figure, about twice the number than you're actually going to use on the finished mix. And my final point, my fifth point when it comes to choosing tracks for your mixtape is try not to say everything in a single mixtape. This isn't the only mixtape you'll ever make, so decide what the idea or the theme is for this mix, stick to it, and keep other ideas for other mixes. It will make it a far smoother and easier to listen to mix if you don't try and cram too much into it. Okay, so now you've chosen your tunes, it's time to try and get them into the right order, roughly into the right order, and this is called programming your mix. So a few tips about programming your mix. There is a sheet you can download with uh, the kind of mind map of all this stuff I'm talking to you about in this lesson because there's quite a lot of stuff here. So you don't need to scribble all of this down, but just a few ideas to get you thinking. Uh, aim to make your mix a journey. So on a journey, you need to set the tone so people know where you're taking them. It's a deep house mix, probably good good idea to start off with a couple of deep house tracks. But then you need to disrupt that tone once or twice along the way. All good journeys have moments where things happen that could not have been foreseen at the start, things to conquer. So nods to other genres, couple of tracks that challenge the kind of, the kind of scene you set, the tone you set is always a good idea. And then at the end, there has to be a sense of coming back, but hopefully coming back changed, slightly different to at the beginning of the journey. So returning to the genre you started with, but perhaps if you started with an instrumental, ending with a vocal, if you started with a very laid back track, ending with a similar style of track, but with a bit more energy, a sense of going back to the beginning, it's something circular. So think about making your mix a journey. And if you're stuck on this point, go and listen to the mix or mixes you wrote down on the worksheet earlier and see how they did it. Because I guarantee you, if it's a mix you love, there's gonna be a journey going on there. So another tip when it comes to programming, think about varying the energy level. Get into the habit of marking your tracks one to five for energy. 
Now I hijack the rating stars in my DJ software. I don't need ratings. I know, I know I like all the tracks I've got. So I hijack those rating stars and I put a one to five star on my perceived energy level of the tracks. You could cut and paste actual star icons into a blank column in your DJ software if you're a visual person and it hasn't got energy stars as part of the, the way it works. Uh, you could also just write energy equals one, energy equals five, whatever, in the comments column. However you do it, try and tag your tracks by your perception of energy level. Because then you can look at the mix of your programming and say, am I sticking on one energy level for too long? Am I varying it up and down enough? Varying the energy helps to keep listeners' attention. So another tip is consider, consider mixing in key a little bit more than you might in a live set. All DJ software nowadays, all DJ systems have got ways of telling you what key is gonna work with the currently playing track. Use them. Mixing in key can add a lot to the flow and the overall polish of a mixtape. You can use it in live circumstances, of course, and DJs do, but in a live circumstance, you're also thinking about what's the right track to play next for the people in front of me right now. You don't have that with a mixtape, you have more freedom. So use that freedom and try and use key mixing a little bit more to give your mix a bit of extra polish and flow. Don't worry about working from start to end when you're figuring all of this out, when you're getting your track order right. You can always add tracks before the bit you've worked on and after the bits you've worked on and, and do it piece by piece. I often start a mix by planning a, a section that I get stuck and the next bit I work on ends up going before the bit I've already done and that's cool. You can order the tracks in your playlist uh, in a couple of ways. You can order them by literally dragging them around in the playlist as you're working all this out or you can do it on paper. I tend to do both. I tend to have a piece of paper next to me. Remember I said earlier about environment, have somewhere you can sit down when you're doing this. I'm normally sat down with my headphones on and my software open and I'm figuring all this stuff out and I'll have a piece of paper with my chunks of tunes on them but I'm also pulling them around in the playlist to get them into the off order I want as well. But don't worry about doing that from beginning to end. You can do it how it comes to you. And finally, for programming your mix, if you find yourself doubting your music choice or your programming at any point, it's a simple question you can ask. Would I listen to it? Because at the end of the day, if your mix doesn't impress you, it's not going to impress anyone. I find myself coming back to that when I'm getting stuck and not sure what to include next or whether I've got the order right. You know, would I be impressed by this? Would I like this? And if not, it's back to the drawing board. Okay, so with our tunes chosen and with our rough track order sorted out, it's now time to start practicing the mix itself and tightening up our transitions. And that's the practice part, the third thing I want to talk to you about here. So some tips for that. Work on your individual transitions, get those spot on, uh, and then record a rough outline of the mix and listen to it a day or two later and decide if it works as a mix or if it doesn't work as a mix, what needs changing. It's okay to spend several days or even longer doing this time and time again, letting your subconscious mind figure out what works and what doesn't work on your mix. So don't rush this part. A great tip from my friend Yakov, who runs Mixed in Key uh, about uh, planning a house mix and it, the chances are quite high you will. Uh, so his tip is specifically for house mixes. He analyzed thousands of them and this is what he came up with. Your first track should be an instrumental. Your second track should be a vocal. And all subsequent tracks should be whatever you want, but the timings are important here. So the first track, the instrumental, no more than two and a half minutes long. The second track, the vocal, no more than four minutes long. And the, the, the subsequent tracks, no more than five minutes long. So he goes into a bit more detail about why, and I've linked to his book underneath to the, the section so you can see. But it's a good rule of thumb if you're stuck. The first track an instrumental but no longer than two and a half minutes, the second track a vocal but no longer than four minutes, and all subsequent tracks no longer than five. So there's a little tip for you there from him. Now, once you get to the point where you think you're getting there, you want to create what, what we call a run sheet. It's a sheet of paper, where, and I use paper for this, where you write down all the tracks in the order you're gonna play them and the transitions as well. And the idea is that you can follow that sheet of paper tomorrow, next week, next month, and you can reproduce the mix perfectly from that sheet of paper. Use cue points to make transition points so you know that when you hit the cue point that's where the transitions start and note it on your sheet. Note on your sheet the BPM and any key shifts you're making on your tracks. Anything else that's gonna help, note it down. That run sheet is really important because it's gonna take all the pain out of performing your mix when it's time to record it. Now when you think you're ready, have at least one practice run through of your mix following that run sheet. Now don't worry if you don't get the transitions right, this is more to check the flow and the programming and to check you've got the overall length right at the end of all this process, to so have one final run through. Now beneath this lesson 
is a sheet that you can print out, uh, you can download and print out, that you can use to plan out your mix and your transitions. It's your personal run sheet, and it's the exact one I use to plan out mine. So get that done, get yourself to this point, there's a bit of work here, and we'll see you in the next module, because in the next module, you're gonna be ready to record your mix.